So in this question, we're told that we're using the indirect method and we need to figure out how we would report a gain from the sale of debt securities classified as held to maturity, right? So with the indirect method, we have to remember that in the operating section, our starting point is net income. And when we record gains under US GAAP in the income statement, right? That doesn't necessarily reflect the cash that's received. That's just the difference between the cash received and the cost basis, right? And so that gain isn't really representative of cash flow. Well, our treatment for the gain is actually to subtract it out of the operating section. But then where does the cash received from the sale of debt securities go? That's the real question here. Well, the thing we need to remember about debt securities is that they're classified as available for sale or held to maturity. And in that case, they would be recorded in the investing section. So the cash received from the buyer of that debt security, right? 100% of that cash received would go to the investing section. Now, let me show you an example so we completely understand what this means. So let's say that the company receives $500 from the sale of this held to maturity debt security, right? And let's say their cost base was 400. Well, they would have recognized a gain of $100 in uh, the income statement, and that is an addition to net income. Well, what do we need to do with that gain? We need to subtract it out in the operating section, right? So that $100 is gonna be a negative 100 in the operating section. And then that full cash received of 500, that's going in the investing section. So anytime we have a gain or loss that is reported in net income, well, when it comes to the cash flow statement, we're gonna to have to subtract out that gain or add back that loss because otherwise we will double count when preparing our cash flow statement. And if you were preparing the full cash flow statement, you would see why this doesn't reconcile, right? You would not be able to get your ending cash flow balance to match ending cash on the balance sheet because you wouldn't have treated this gain or loss properly, right? So it's very, very important to remember this key little detail. So the correct answer is gonna be the gain is deducted from net income in the operating section, right? That is true using the indirect method. And then the cash received from the sale is reported in the investing section of the statement of cash flows, right? So that's gonna be the correct answer here.